I like just hit record. These are a little low. Hello. Today, from the title of this video, you can see we will be cooking. I don't know what this accent is, but I'm going to end it soon. <laughs> Welcome to Cece's Bistro or Cafe. That sounds better. Welcome to Cece's Cafe. You've read the title. I'm assuming that's why you clicked on it. And if you did, you know I'm gonna be making crab cake benedict. Most of it's pre-made stuff. <laughs> I'm just putting it together. I caught it. It's fine. The only ingredients I really need are these bad boys and this. I was gonna make my own crab cake, but real crab was like almost $30 for eight ounces. We ain't got that kind of money out here. <laughs> so I bought this. They're Maryland style crab cakes. I'm from Maryland and I can vouch that these are actually pretty good. I'm gonna put these down before I drop them. They're pretty close to real crab cakes and they're made with real wild caught blue crab, which is the key to a Maryland crab cake. This was the only one that I could find that had real crab meat and not imitation crab. I hate imitation crab. It does not do a very good job at imitating crab. And I just knew that if I did this with imitation crab, I was not gonna like it. And the goal is to like it. I actually made this for breakfast, brunch on Christmas for me and my mom, amongst other things. But I made this the for the first time because I've never made Benedict before, but it's always really good in restaurants. And I wanted to challenge myself and make it, and it actually came out pretty good. But I wanted to show off my culinary skills today. So you can just call me Chef Cece, Gordon Ramsay, I'm coming for your brand. Let's make this official, okay? Because this automatically elevates you from a home chef to a restaurant chef <coughs> in my cafe. <laughs> I never made hollandaise sauce before, and it's a lot of work, but it's actually kind of easy. Whether it was perfect or not, I don't know, but it, it was good. I don't have a metal bowl because when you make hollandaise sauce, you're supposed to double boil it. So I'm using my stand mixer bowl and it works, you know, just fine. We're speaking of, I'm just gonna fill this with a little bit of water. I don't want it to boil, I just want it to steam a little. I didn't put too much in because I don't actually want it to touch the bottom of the bowl. You just want the steam to hit the bowl. Yeah, let's get cracking. These eggs. <laughs> I actually prepared this time because I've done this before. I don't even have a recipe. I don't even have a recipe. I just know. So I have my eggs. I don't know. I'm a little nervous because I'm only using one egg yolk when the recipe that I had originally used needed four. I don't need that much hollandaise sauce. So I cut down the recipe that I had and I remembered what it was. I remembered, but I have my, the egg I'm gonna use and I have two tablespoons of melted butter. And I just need the yolk for this one. And then I'm gonna poach this egg. Now, I thought making the hollandaise sauce was gonna be the hardest part of this recipe. Turns out it's poaching the egg. It looks pretty simple. You just lightly simmer some water, twirl it and put the egg in, but it's not that easy. And I think I kept pulling them out when they weren't quite set yet. Every time I'd pull it out and I would use my slotted spoon and it would just slip through. This time I've learned my lesson and I'm gonna do better. And it's gonna be a perfect one because I don't have enough eggs to just keep messing around. <laughs> I have some salt, pepper, cayenne, and lemon juice. That's it. I thought there was way more to hollandaise sauce, but that's, there's not. I am going to go ahead and crack my egg, add the salt, pepper, and cayenne, and lemon juice. And the first thing I have to do is whisk it to, to to whisk it, get the process started. Just have to whisk it enough to, what's the word? To fluff it. And, and, <coughs> words aren't working today. Aerate until it gets lighter and doubles in volume. I don't really know when it doubles in volume because I always forget what it originally looked like. And by the time I'm done, that should be nice and hot. In order to not annoy you with how loud it is to whisk, I am here, hi, doing a little bit of voiceover. 
This is the oh no, look at me looking stupid. <laughs> so while I'm whisking this, I set the egg whites that I'm not gonna use um, to the side and I'll probably cook that up for Coda um, to go on top of her dinner because now she has dry food but the princess doesn't like it. It just, it just means we've had to get creative with toppers and giving her food and getting her to eat, huh? So don't worry, this egg white isn't gonna go to waste. I have my personal garbage disposal at the ready to eat whatever is in front of her. Actually, that's a lie because she'll try to eat things that she's absolutely not supposed to, um, but then you give her actual food and she will wait until you have something better to offer first. Spoiled brat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's about doubled in volume. That actually went a lot faster than last time I made it, probably because I'm only using one egg yolk. Looks pretty good. The water is warmed up. You can't see it, but it is steaming. I'm telling you, make hollandaise sauce. At least try it. It really is easy. Now I just gotta put this over the steam and steam it slowly, add in the butter a little bit and continue whisking. And that's it. That's it, that's all you have to do. It is so easy. Something you can do is just put it in a blender too. I don't have a blender, otherwise I would have done that. If I make enough of this, I really will walk out looking like The Rock's secret child or something, I don't know. We gonna get mm, <laughs> It's enough of that, let's put it on the, put it on the heat. Come with me. Hi, join me. Can you see? Hi, can you see it steaming? No. A little bit. It does fit pretty well in this bowl. <laughs> oh no, my butter is gone. Oh shoot. Okay, the sound is gonna be really annoying again, so really quickly, I'm just gonna keep doing this. Okay, so from now on, I am only gonna be making this one egg at a time because that went so fast. You get kind of a lot with just one egg yolk. Now the real hard work starts. <laughs> um, I need to poach the egg. I'm actually just gonna use the same water because it's just water and make this again. I don't want it boiling, but I need to get like, you know, a little bit of bubbles going. We need a little bubbly. Okay, I'm stressed. <laughs> This lighting is crazy. <laughs> like I will say, this is very easy, but this is still like a special occasion kind of breakfast, brunch, in my case, early dinner, it's four o'clock. <laughs> but this is not something I wanna do every day. Um, so while I wait for that to get back warm again, I'm gonna make the crab cakes. I just have to put them on the stove. Um, you know how that works. <laughs> put some avocado oil in the pan and cook up these crab cakes. I saw too, like another way that you can poach an egg is if you put it in like a glass and just put the whole glass in the in there. But I don't know if these glasses are like heat proof. Cause the last thing I want is to put the egg in there and then put this in the water and it just shatters. Speaking of glass shattering, me and my mom, okay, first of all, I don't think I said this, but this is our new place. <laughs> We've only been here for maybe a month now. I don't even think it's been a month. I don't know. Time is meaningless. And you know, during that time between the last apartment and here, we were traveling and we drove from here, Seattle, down to Joshua Tree and we're there for a month. And then we slowly made our way back. We spent a couple weeks in Big Bear. I don't know why my voice shook <laughs> in Big Bear. And then we did come back here for probably a week and then we went to Whidbey Island for a week. And then we spent the last month before here in Osovus, British Columbia. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. It was very beautiful. I don't know why I'm talking about that. That's beside the point. My main reason I'm saying that is because we ended up moving here right as winter hit. At one point when we came back, we were in the car. We were waiting for the car to heat up. And you know, you put the little window things on and it helps warm up. I don't know, it defrosts. I'm not a mechanic, I don't know. The point is you put those on and it the fog goes bye-bye. We did that. My mom went and took Coda to go pee real quick. And I was just in the car and all of a sudden I heard, <sighs> I was like, what the hell is that? I thought someone was trying to break in because that's what it sounded like. And so now I'm terrified of <laughs> um, heat with glass. Like I knew like heat shock was a thing, you know, science, but I've never seen it happen. 
and I was in the car when that happened. Thankfully, it was the back window, not the front window, but I really, I watch enough horror movies that my mind immediately went to murdered. I'm being murdered. <laughs> It took us a while to find this just because it's really hard finding a place that allows pit bulls. So that was kind of half the reason why we decided to travel. Um, it's because we just could not find a place that would accept pit bulls. But eventually we obviously had to find something. It got to the point where we just ended up registering Coda as an emotional support animal, which she technically kind of is. There, I mean, there's support there, you know? It's just more where her support humans. I get why people get upset when people do that. We did it purely out of necessity. We're not gonna take advantage of it and just start bringing her places that she's not supposed to be, but we needed a place to live. And the only way that people would accept her and ignore breed restrictions is if she was registered as an emotional support animal. But I swear, we're not gonna be those people that take advantage of it. Literally was purely out of, we need a place to live. <laughs> I just wanted to let this be a tale. If you get a pit bull and you rent places, just be aware finding a place is gonna Gonna be very difficult is point of this part of the story life is hard with a pit bull stop hating on them she's a pain in the ass but she's a good dog oh god i'm so nervous okay 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 <laughs> eh, that's fine so the water has got a good roll going i'm just gonna spin it and while she's spinning i'm just gonna dunk this in i do need a bowl with a paper towel <gasps> wait hold on are you kidding me wait <sighs> i think i did it oh no ah my yoke broke i got too cocky <laughs> it broke but we learned something now i know what it should look like to know when it's done and this time i'm just gonna take it out and immediately put it down like i should have the first time You versus the egg she told you not to worry about. Look, it's still got a jiggle in it. You ain't ready for this jelly. I'm going to assemble this really quick. I do feel like I have to <laughs> say really quick, my crab cakes kind of turn into crab mash. I know you're probably wondering, um, Cece's Cafe, I'm writing a review. Mine does not have an English muffin. Well, that's because um, I don't like them. <laughs> But anytime I'm in Maryland and I get a crab cake Benedict, it doesn't come with an English muffin. Usually the crab cake acts as both the English muffin and the ham that's normally on a plastic eggs Benedict. But yeah, I don't like English muffins. The taste is fine. I think for me, it's, I have trypophobia and not in like the weird, it's all of a sudden trendy, <laughs> but I genuinely have it like to the point where I can't, I get, oh no, I get like chills. It, it freaks me out. I don't like it. And seeing it makes me nauseous. You know, like when you're about to throw up <laughs> and your mouth starts getting like watery because it's boobing up. <laughs> this is great to talk about right before you eat. That's what happens when I look at holes. Like I start to get that and my heart starts like, it's genuinely like that feeling right before you throw up. English muffins are a huge trigger for me because if you've never opened up an English muffin, the inside of it is so whole. I can't, it makes me, no English muffins in this house, okay? So, crab cake, egg, hollandaise. I'm gonna assemble this. I have some chives, I'm gonna chop it up on there. Chop it up, put it on there. <laughs> and then we'll be back to taste and review. you back a little bit more oh clearly i'm a cinematographer okay i should have put it on an actual plate but there it is the one egg that broke is still somehow intact i don't i don't really know what miracle i have one that looks like an amateur made it and i have one that looks kind of professional if i do say so myself now this was the good one wow I'm a chef. <laughs> now the only thing left to do is to taste it. Mm. Yes. It's just like I remember it from two weeks ago when I made it. <laughs> it does give me like home feels. 
nothing left to say it was good i can cook like i can follow a recipe the only problem is i'm a slow cook because i think I, I'm, I'm too much of a perfectionist at the same time so i try to do most things kind of exactly at least the first time and then after that i'll like change it to do whatever i want to do because of that i end up cooking really slow and then by the time i eat it just doesn't feel like it was worth however long it took me to make it this though this took me like probably like an hour but i feel like you really could pull this out in like maybe 20 minutes if you're good at multitasking <laughs> if you made the crab cakes from scratch i think that would be the only thing that would make this like top tier if you want to impress somebody into thinking you know how to cook make this don't tell them it was easy and you were at that stove cooking thanks for coming to my cafe here's your receipt you can pay the bill at the counter tip well go pay gosh some people just don't know when to leave this is it we're good we're done i hope you enjoyed this video she gets so mad when she hears other dogs barking because it disturbs her sleep i know she's funny anytime she gets stressed when she hears dogs or people or something she immediately gets water she's like oh i need a drink all right we're gonna go the dogs are all descending into chaos a little bit <laughs> hope you enjoyed my cafe don't forget to pay your bill leave a good tip for both the chef and the waiter see you soon probably not cooking again but soon i'm gonna go okay bye bye